Hello everybody and welcome back to a man who's trying to justify his expensive life decisions. My name is Evan Ettinger and today we're going to be talking about American stereotypes. Are they real or are they just more of that fake news media BS? Also, this is the first video I'm uploading with my brand new camera, my Sony a7S III, shooting with a completely different camera <clears throat> camera? Now shooting with a completely different aperture, ISO, all that whatnot. Shooting with a different gamma actually, using Slog 3 instead of HLG3. We got new bedding, got new life. It's coming on the up and up, so let's get into it. Stereotypes, what do we got first? I thought it'd be a good idea, instead of just going to the classic stereotypes that everyone seems to talk about, why don't I ask you guys on my community tab? So thank you guys for subscribing and ringing the bell, joining in the community. Also, the sun's just decided to come out, so hopefully it doesn't ruin the shot too much. Uh, the first stereotype comes from Isabella Prati, who says, you believe that America is superior than any other county. Well, you know, at least our grammar's superior, Isabella, believe, than, Country, come on! But yeah, as much as this is a stereotype, it is a stereotype for a reason. This is just a thing that is ingrained in American culture. We are the best, we are the freest, we are the best at being free, all of the above. Uh, actually, a study was found in 2017, which is literally three years ago, uh, polled the American public and found that 85% of Americans said that America was either the greatest country in the world or one of the greatest. All right, that's 17 out of 20 people in America thought they are basically the greatest or one of the greatest in the world. Now, in case you were thinking, oh, well, isn't it just conservatives that think like that? Not actually. In terms of viewing that America is one of the greatest or the greatest, 71% of liberals believe this and 95% of conservatives. So yeah, obviously conservatives think this more. And actually uh, furthering that, one in two conservatives in America believe that America is the greatest. Or rather, one in two conservatives don't read the news. I guess. The middle section of America doesn't exist. That and we got all our land the good and legal way through God. Yes, this is correct. I don't necessarily know if that's a stereotype that we all think that we got the land the good and legal way. Sure, it's not necessarily taught that the ways in which America got a lot of the land wasn't necessarily the nicest ways. You know, you are taught about the Louisiana Purchase and the Purchase of Alaska and all that area over there. You are taught about those things, at least I was in school. But the other methods, I don't know, Hawaii was just kind of like, we wanted another state and we helped them out. The, the sugar farmers seemed like they were having a problem over there. So we were like, we'll help, we'll just take you. But about the stereotype that the middle of America doesn't exist, I'm pretty sure that's a stereotype that exists no matter what region you're looking at. I'm from an incredibly small state, New Jersey. And yet there's no such thing as Central Jersey. Ask anyone from the center. They'll just say, no, hey, we, and then you cut them off because they're just being silly. There's just a North and there's a South. In England, there's supposedly a Midlands, but it's just kind of like one of those fictional creatures you hear so much about, like a Tory that cares for the poor or something. Education system is very American based and you learn little about the rest of the world. St I asked for stereotypes. Uh, yeah, this is a stereotype, I guess you could say, but also that's the way it is. Like that's not necessarily a stereotype as much as that is ingrained in our education system. You don't really learn as much about uh, outside cultures except for, you know, when the US is involved. Like my personal recollection of social studies or our history class growing up was we did learn about England at one point when it came to the industrial revolution. We learned about like how humans existed in the beginning of time with like Mesopotamia. And then also we learned a lot about Europe in regards to World War One and Two, But outside of that, that was literally it. We learned a lot about the US history in terms of Revolutionary War, the Civil War. We didn't really learn much about history after 1950, now that I think about it, except in like one of my history courses, we did get to learn about the Cold War, which I thought was exciting because we're like, wow, a different topic about America that I usually don't learn. But as a quick example, I do think this would make a really interesting side video to make a video about like how my US history classes were growing up versus even that, I didn't have a history class. I had a US history class, I just realized that. Well, I didn't have a class in high school called history. It was US history one and two. <laughs> the education system in America definitely needs systemic change so that Americans growing up can be educated about other countries and not just think, oh, their countries are all poor, which is basically uh, another question we got here as a stereotype, which was they're uneducated about other cultures and they think other countries outside America all live in poverty. That is also, it is a stereotype. Obviously, not everyone thinks this, but there's always this weird tone with most everyone I know uh, that is the case. Like when you're visiting the country of Europe, you're like, oh wow, it's so interesting to see how they live. But it's always like a slight pejorative. And also, I mean, I did have a very strong Christian upbringing, so there's always that feeling like, oh, we gotta go save a lot of people in these impoverished countries like Hungary. Hungary? 
They're not that hungry over there for food. I, I, it's actually, they got pretty cheap alcohol. It's pretty nice. But they're gonna be hungry for Jesus. <laughs> okay. I'm laughing because I'm crying inside. Uh, the fact that you can spot an American tourist anywhere and we're super wasteful slash don't recycle like the rest of UK slash Europe. This is a really annoying stereotype because I so strongly embody the second half where I had for so much of my life. It's weird that you can pick up your culture so strongly, but the whole don't recycle thing, it was almost cool. I'm gonna throw that out there, not to recycle. Most of my like upbringing, you know, it was just, oh, I don't got time for that. We're America, who got time to recycle? We'll just throw it away. And there's like every step of the way, you're kind of shown that that's okay to think and recycling is annoying. Sure, there were shows like Captain Planet that were like, yo, recycling's pretty cool, kids, I'm a superhero. But I don't really think that got through to me as much because there'd always be things where you see a recycling truck picking up recyclables, but then there's that rumor that they're actually all just going to the same place, there's no point wasting your time. And the worst part of this is, a lot of times it's not even a rumor. I, I kid you not. The university I went to in America, Rowan University, was always like, we're so green. Look at us, we're a green university. And they'd like shout this from the rooftops. I'd see them with a garbage truck taking the trash and recyclables and dumping it all into the same garbage bin. So it, it's just green theater, really. It's trying to pretend to be green. And that's what a lot of places in America are like. Actually, I had this photo I took in the Marriott Hotel, the biggest Marriott in all of the world. It's the World Center in Orlando. I took a photo of their bins and tweeted it the other day. This is what it looks like. What is the point of having a recycling section if it's all one bag that's going to be thrown away? It's green theater. So the company can make you feel like they're doing a good thing. You feel like you're doing a good thing and the company doesn't have to spend any money or time actually recycling. It's a win-win-lose. The lose being, of course, the world. Uh, because your great-great-grandfather's second cousin was Irish, you're Irish and you can drink lots. You're not. You're American. Irish culture is really big in the US and by Irish culture, I mean Irish American culture. That's the thing. Being a country full of immigrants, I do feel like people really find themselves attached to their heritage and their ancestors and their upbringing. And I don't really see as much wrong with that as a lot of Europeans do that get really angry about this. Let them be happy for one small thing. Sure, saying I'm Irish when your great great granddad's second cousin's dog is sure that maybe doesn't make sense. But saying I have Irish heritage, I think should be fine. You know, they just got to work on their phrasing. I myself am 0% Italian, but I proudly come from the Italian state of New Jersey. We make a good pizza. Okay, so I'm proud of that. I'm not going to say I'm Italian. I don't got no blood, but I come from an Italian state angering everyone in Italy. <laughs> the regard with which they hold their constitution, like it's some sacred, ineffable text passed down from a higher power. They seem to look to it for moral guidance as much as legal. Yes, this is a big part of a US stereotype that annoyingly is just instilled with us. That's part of our culture. It's weird because like the UK has a Magna Carta. Every country has their own, you know, texts that are just laws. But in the US, we have managed to make a semi-religious connotation uh, to patriotism. But here's the thing. If we're only taught US history and we have to write essays about how amazing our freedom is and how thankful we are that we have this freedom and kind of telling us in a way that other countries do not have the freedoms that we have, which is for the most part, pretty much a lie. You can understand how people are going to be worshiping this piece of fabric slash constitution because they're like, wow, thanks to this, I'm living so much better than everyone else. And because in that world, in that bubble, it is true. It's just not. And hey, we got a positive one. Americans are very open, polite, and friendly to strangers slash people they meet for the first time. Yes, this is true. I would say at least more so than the UK where I've grown to live or rather maybe just London. But I think Americans are at least for the most part, well known for being a bit more outgoing, for talking to people in the street, for talking to people in an elevator. Listen, you can make a friend there. You only got two levels to go. Let's get to the next level of friendship. But yeah, I'd say that Americans are a lot more open and outgoing with other people. They're just, I think, a bit more confident. That might have something to do with it. Americans don't understand the metric system. When I asked for stereotypes, I didn't ask for facts. What's up? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just that we don't have to use it. I mean, you can see the very small kilometers per hour on your speedometer sometimes if you really squint, but then you're gonna get a car crash, okay? Um, we use Imperial for, I think, nearly everything, except, and this is the one that blows a lot of people's minds, in the US, we have two liter bottles of soda, all right? We're in the metric. However, if you don't want two liters, you're like, that's too much soda. I want less. Maybe a liter? No, 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 no. You get a 20 ounce. 
So you get a mix and match. And that is one thing that always blew my mind. It's like you, you get two liters or you get a 20 fluid ounces of Pepsi. What? How are you gonna switch metrics? How does that make any sense? That's like an officer pulling you over and being like, Sir, do you know you were going 65 miles an hour? And you're like, no, actually I was going 72 kilometers per hour. And then he's like, I don't know much about the metric system. I'm gonna let you off. You have a nice day, sir. If that cop had only did the math, he'd realize uh, you were going so far under the speed limit, you probably should have gotten pulled over. <laughs> that everyone loves guns so much. I doubt everyone does, but that does seem to be the stereotype. I think guns is one of those topics where a lot of people in the US are now pretty split, but I think this goes back into the other topic of how, because we are taught so much about US history and how our rights are so unique and how they're great and how everyone else's aren't that great, it's hard to get rid of that thought in your mind that, oh, we have this right that I've been told since I was a child that is the best thing ever, and now I have to be told it's not that great and people are dying all over the place because we just can't update our old, old, old laws. So it's not that everyone's obsessed with guns, it's just that the people that are obsessed with guns have got like eight different types of black powder rifle, got a semi, got an auto, got a Glock, you know, you got a whole stock full. I'd say that's more of a 50-50 stereotype where some people are very much super pro-gun and some people are just very much not. So, depends on who you meet, depending on what area of the country you're going as well. You make using cutlery look complicated. Why do you cut stuff up and then swap over your fork to only eat using the fork? Or, if you're Evan, you can just hack things up with your fork. Because that's the best way to eat, okay? I still say this to this day. You do not need a knife unless you're eating some type of big tough steak. You just got a fork. British people, they turn their fork upside down. I don't know what they're doing with that. L the fork literally has a curvature to scoop and people be putting things upside down. I don't understand it. Uh, but most people in the US, yeah, we do the same thing. You cut with your right hand, which is the strong one most of the time for most people, and then you switch so you can use your strong hand to eat again. But are you really trying to gatekeep eating? I do find it a really weird concept that you're like, oh, you switch hands of a utensil? Oh, barbaric. Like, come on, what? Come on. It's not the 1700s anymore, all right? You're not wearing big fluffy wigs and going out to Gunnersbury Park to have a little stroll with your little strut. No, grow up, all right? Just put the British accent on that. I don't know Wales exists. Actually, obesity is a really big problem. There was a bad joke, I'm sorry. But don't worry, Welsh people, I know Wales exists. I was just in Wales this weekend, got a travel vlog coming, uh, check link in the description, hopefully it's live. Mammoth food portions, there's no way anyone needs that much food. It is a stereotype because I was trying to think when I was looking up this comment, if there's any American restaurants I know that don't give really big portions, and I just can't think of any. Like even Panera Bread, like when I go to Panera Bread, which is just a nice sandwich chain in the States, they really fill me up. You know, you get a, a pretty nice amount of soup and sandwich. Not bad. Cheesecake Factory is always the culprit I think of where it's just so much food that it hurts to eat it all, but that's why you're supposed to ask for a box, ask for a doggy bag. You believe you have the most rights and are the most free. We believe the truth. <laughs> Everyone has a swimming pool in their house. I never had a swimming pool growing up, but I did know a lot of people that had in-ground pools and also the above-ground pools. We just have a lot of lands and also it gets really, really hot in the summer. So yeah, a lot of people are gonna have pools. I do miss having access to a nice outdoor pool though. I don't feel like anyone I know in London at all has a pool, might be down to the land. But also growing up, there were so many public pools I had access to. Every town, every small little city has multiple pools you can swim at or lakes or bodies of water or ponds. You like swimming in ponds? I don't know, at least in Jersey. I don't know about Arizona. You guys swim in sand over there. <laughs> Ignorance. I'm a Canadian and I once had someone get genuinely mad at me for not knowing all 50 states, then proceed to ask if we have a Canadian Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but I also get kind of weirded out when people don't know all 50 states. Obviously I've grown out of that, but it would just be like, how do you not know? Come on, they're right there. Do you not know all 50 states? Do you not know all the capitals? Cause they're all pretty easy. Tallahassee, come on, uh, Carson City, Nevada. You gotta know all the capitals. No, that's what I learned instead of learning, you know, history of the world. But I guess similar stereotype. I would say most Americans, if not like 95% know all the states. We definitely know that. Other countries outside of North America, may maybe, Maybe not. By far the stereotype you guys posted about most was loud, just loud. Yeah, listen, I, I find this interesting like that we as a nation of America do just speak a bit louder than everyone else. And it's such a strange thing that everyone just accepts that. They're like, oh, Americans are all a lot louder. I don't know why, maybe it also has to do with this confidence that we have where we're just confidently speaking and we don't really care who's hearing. 
I'm a pretty confident guy. I, I speak with quite a volume, but I get told multiple times sometimes, like Evan, inside voice. I think we're not loud. Y'all just quiet. Everyone drives flatbed trucks. I think you mean to say pickup trucks uh, or four by fours. Basically everything is bigger often when it doesn't need to be. I wouldn't say it doesn't need to be. Growing up in South Jersey, yeah, there's loads of pickup trucks. There's loads of people driving big Hummers around and things like that. But also I think one thing a lot of people don't realize is people with pickup trucks often use the pickup trucks to pick things up or put things in their flat bed, you could say, such as lumber or gardening stuff. You know, a lot of people, at least in my home state, did a lot of farming. And so pickup trucks were everywhere because everyone kind of needed them. My family has an FJ Cruiser, that's a big truck. However, I mean, they did get hit by a car. My mom got blindsided like a couple years ago, completely survived, thank God, because she was in a very big, safe vehicle. Uh, I, I did find it interesting that I was telling my friend Kim I was considering getting some type of like SUV and she was like, you will be hated in the UK. People will not let you pass. And I was like, what? Just for owning a specific type of car? Yes, they're very green over here. In the US, it's kind of like similar vein to the recycling thing. It's less a big deal. I'd like to have the ability to bring a lot of things with me. If I want to go on a camping trip, I can have a vehicle that helps me get there. Not just having to have the tiniest car because it's the most fuel efficient, but maybe that is uh, because of my American upbringing. Uh, good teeth? I know English people are supposed to have particularly bad teeth, but Americans just be gleaming. This maybe is because of like marketing over years and years. I don't quite know, but I do know that everyone I knew growing up either had really nice teeth or got braces. I think it just might be another thing where our outward image is a very important thing, at least stereotypically. But like I said, most people I knew, we had braces and now my teeth are not so bad. Got wisdom teeth in. That you can only drive automatic cars. Well, Rebecca, it's 2020. Why would we need to drive a manual car, okay? I'm not telling you I know how to drive a Model T, all right? The first ever car by Henry Ford. Don't need to know how to do that. I would say that yes, a large, large, large majority of Americans do not know how to drive manual because you don't have to know. There's always an argument people make, which is a false argument of you get better mileage as a manual. Yeah, in the 90s, when the computer systems were not as good as humans. At this point, there's no reason really to drive a manual, unless you just want to. My mom, personally, she loved driving stick shift. It was a fun thing for her. It was a hobby. If you're an American stick shift driver, stand up for yourself in the comments, because I just don't, I just don't get it. And of course, the last one, the most important one, but a lot of Americans, subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell, because I make new videos every single Sunday. Community videos are coming back. Please tell me what you think about this setup. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we've got more on the way. I will see you guys on the next one. A goot, a bye. <laughs>